But we're very happy if that's what you're wondering yeah. about. The hottest celebrity couple of 2022 was also the hottest celebrity couple of 2002, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. Back in the aughts, Benifer got together on the set of the movie Gigli, became a tabloid sensation, got engaged, and then flamed out all in the span of 18 months and under intense public scrutiny. Our relationship, I think, did suffer because of that. Not, that's not the only reason. You know, I would never blame the media for anything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But almost 20 years and several marriages and children later, they've gotten back together. And as a star item, they're more popular than ever. Why are we even more enthralled by Benefer's second go-around than the first one? In part, it's because we're fascinated by the concept of the one that got away. The idea of a great love who slips away due to bad timing, incompatibility, or another roadblock. It was my first like adult heartbreak. And the fantasy that you can one day get them back. There's a contagious optimism to these two romantic partners reuniting after many years apart to rebuild that lost relationship into something even better. And it feels like even more of a wild dream in the world of celebrity dating, where it's a cliche that relationships, affairs, and breakups happen at warp speed. As Lopez said in an interview with People, when you find somebody and you really, really love them and you get a second chance at that, that is a really rare, precious, beautiful thing and we don't take it for granted. I think what we learned from the last time is that uh, love, when you are lucky enough to find it, is so sacred and special and you have to hold a little bit of that privately. Here's our take on the cultural symbolism of Benefer, the ultimate real-life narrative of second chances in love. I don't know if you are aware of how good the internet thinks you look. Is it the J-Lo glow? Like, how much happiness is she bringing into your life? Because you're looking good, man. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. This episode is sponsored by Likewise. Likewise is launching a new product, Likewise TV, a single destination where you can access all of your streaming services in one place. When I feel like watching something, I can get really overwhelmed by the endless options. There are so many streaming services and I'm constantly bouncing between them to try to find a show or a movie. Sometimes by the time I do find something, I'm too burnt out to really enjoy it. Likewise TV solves this problem. It's a personalized streaming hub that puts the shows and movies from all my streaming services together. I no longer have to rack my brain trying to remember where the movie I want to watch is streaming. I can just turn to Likewise TV. One feature I love is the Likewise TV watch list. It's a single watch list for all of my streaming services. I also love the spotlight feature, which lets me see what's new and leaving for every streaming service so I don't have to keep up with each one individually. If you want to spend your time actually watching instead of trying to figure out what to watch, try Likewise TV today by clicking the link in the description below. Unless you're one of the lucky few who have lived a life without any regrets, you probably have a one who got away. That lost love who just might have been your soulmate and to whom your mind might still wander from time to time as you consider what could have been. He was suddenly a presence in my life again. Or had he been there all along? When a relationship dies, do we ever really give up the ghost? Or are we forever haunted by the spirits of relationships past? Movies and TV love to explore this trope, often in the form of stories about lovers who dramatically reunite after many years and countless obstacles. Essentially, this person is your ghost of Paramore's past whom you're eternally chasing in your mind. To understand what went wrong and whether that more ideal life and version of yourself they represent in your mind was ever possible or just a dream to begin with. She was a girl. I know that now. So I've spent every day since then chasing Amy. Often, the one that got away leaves as the result of a mistake, which is why the end of the relationship is tangled up in regret. Or perhaps one partner wavers in their faith in the relationship, giving way to pressures from a family or society that urges them to be with a more suitable partner, only to look back as a more self-assured adult and feel remorse for being too easily influenced out of their true feelings. In spite of the disapproval at home and the anxiety attending his prospects, that I... I should have been happier had you. But even though all of us might ask an occasional what if, anyone unfortunate enough to be truly fixated on the one who got away becomes a figure of pity, implied to be unfulfilled and hung up on the past. F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby is the quintessential literary example of this. The story of new money Gatsby striving in vain to be worthy of the old money love he lost, Daisy, ends with the iconic line, so we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past.
Usually, in stories, the one who got away is a ghost we're not really meant to try to revive and couldn't even reconnect with, any more than we can go back in time and revert to the person we were when we met them. The Age of Innocence ends with the main character deciding that he doesn't want to see his one who got away after so many years, because his memory and fantasy of her have come to mean too much to him. How I Met Your Mother practically runs on this trope, turning zealous romantic Ted's girlfriends like Victoria and Robin into different variations on the one that got away. But one of the series' longest-running gags makes the figure of the one who got away literal as a character who Ted barely even remembers, the girl in the pumpkin costume. When Ted finally dates her, he realizes that she's a real person, a real person who can disappoint him. Kids, it took me 10 years, but I finally kissed her, and it was terrible. Ted is so invested in the idea of the one that got away that he still tries to make it work, until Naomi, the girl in the pumpkin costume, voices the reality he's too scared to face. Once I finally found you, it, it was hard to let you go. Taking all these tropes into the real world, we can imagine that after their breakup, Ben Affleck and J.Lo probably experienced a lot of these retrospective feelings of regret and missed opportunities. Because in their initial relationship, they never really had the chance to get to the bottom of their own reality. G. Lee, the movie they met on, whose reputation is now defined almost entirely by their relationship, got a press reception Affleck described as a tsunami of negative reviews. This fed into the media attention on Affleck and Lopez's relationship, which escalated into a constant frenzy. In a 2010 interview, Lopez admitted that the media focus on their relationship was the primary reason she and Affleck broke up. It was a lot for both of us to be under that type of uh, siege for two years straight. Back in 2003, Affleck and Lopez released a statement delaying their marriage in which they described seriously considering having three separate decoy brides at three different locations. A plot that would be fit for a zany romantic comedy, but maybe not very healthy for a real marriage between two real people. And then you're like being chased and on the cover of magazines all the time, and then you go, wait a minute, I, I do kind of have to change my life. My life has changed. After their breakup, in keeping with the way that the trope of the one that got away implicitly diminishes later love interests, both parties, just like characters in The Notebook, Age of Innocence, or The Great Gatsby, eventually found more stable relationships with people who superficially seemed to make more sense. Lopez married Mark Anthony, another New York recording artist and frequent collaborator. After the co-parents amicably divorced, she got engaged to another New Yorker, former Yankee superstar Alex Rodriguez. Meanwhile, in contrast to J.Lo's Jenny from the Block video aesthetic which fans hadn't really bought Affleck as fitting with, Affleck went on to marry girl next door Jennifer Garner, who was framed in the media as someone capable of taming and making a family man out of a guy once considered a Hollywood Lothario. I want to thank my wife, who's the reason I'm standing here. I adore you. I love you so much. Thanks for sitting through this. You're my everything. Yet their picturesque married life didn't prove so simple. In 2018, after over a decade of marriage, Affleck divorced from Garner amid both an escalation of his well-known substance abuse problems and rumors that he'd possibly cheated with their nanny, though Garner later said they'd already separated before she heard anything about the nanny. And when he famously got a large tattoo of a phoenix on his back in the wake of the divorce, Garner's response in a Vanity Fair cover story, Bless His Heart, cemented Affleck's reputation as the loser in the breakup. For the last few years, the most iconic and culturally pervasive images of Ben Affleck haven't been from any of his movies. They're the meme of him as sad Batman, and paparazzi photos of him looking worn down, vaping in his car, staring off into the ocean, or juggling several cups of Dunkin' Donuts. What has a production like Batman v Superman, which is colossal, taught you as a director and an actor? It taught me not to do interviews with Henry Cavill where I don't say anything and they can lay Simon Garfunkel tracks over it. And while this has made him an object of ridicule, it has also primed him for a resurgence, a comeback narrative that could be made literal by J.Lo, his glamorous one that got away. What seemed especially tragic about J.Lo and Affleck's initial breakup was that it wasn't due to an infidelity, bad behavior, or major interpersonal conflict, but was apparently caused by the very fact that they were in the public eye. Could any relationship kind of survive that? No, it was a lot. As intense as celebrity culture can be now, the early 2000s were a low point for tabloids and celebrity gossip which, as the internet gained power but social media had yet to democratize it, vicious, profit-driven publications were dominated by exploitative pictures and casual cruelty, especially to female celebrities who were shamelessly belittled, bullied, and fat-shamed. 
In recent years, we started to more widely acknowledge the damage this treatment can inflict on very real people. What do you think it'll take to get the paparazzi to leave you alone? Um, I don't know. But it's worth noting how it can inflict similar damage on the relationships of famous people, especially when these relationships become part of the brand. Whereas the prevailing sentiment was once that celebrities almost deserved the bad parts of fame, today we're a little more appreciative of how fame's many perks don't justify preying on celebrities' private lives or terrorizing their families. I don't want a gang of shouting, arguing, law-breaking photographers who camp out everywhere we are, all day, every day, to continue traumatizing my kids. Affleck has himself acknowledged that the relationship between media and celebrities is mutually beneficial and interdependent, and he even sometimes plays into his tabloid star role, but he insists that there are some basic boundaries that must be respected. And even being the subject of that is just sort of the cost of doing business a little bit as an actor, but like not with my kids, don't do that, it's wrong. So it makes sense that, in the 20 years between Affleck's and Lopez's breakup and eventual reconciliation, there's been an increasing ability to see Benefer as a victim of circumstances and as two human beings who lost a love they were excited about and later wondered about it. Ben wanted to be, believe it or not, quiet and not be in the tabloids. I remember like stacks of magazines and we were on it like every week and it was it was scary. It was overwhelming for both of us. As JLo put it in an interview with People, I think different time, different thing, who knows what could have happened, but there was a genuine love there. Affleck claims the Jenny from the Block music video, in which he famously literally kisses Lopez's ass, was his big regret from their relationship, a moment that further transformed them into a celebrity story. Even though the video tried to acknowledge the reality in a way, portraying the two as being hunted by paparazzi, it gave the predatory media more fodder and accelerated Affleck becoming a tabloid star and figure of curiosity. It got to a point where Affleck's longtime friend and collaborator Matt Damon said Affleck felt he could sell magazines but not movie tickets. Throughout their romantic interregnum, Affleck and Lopez maintained a polite, respectful relationship, keeping us aware of how much they still cared for one another. In interviews surrounding the award's success of Argo, Lopez reiterated that she was always rooting for Affleck and happy for his success, especially after the rough period of their relationship. He had such a hard time to look at myself and to look at him now and to have him. He's one best picture at the Golden Globes that he directed the movie. And in an in-style cover story on J.Lo from just before they started seeing each other again, Affleck described Lopez as the hardest working person I've come across in this business. I'm so happy for her that she seems, at long last, to be getting the credit she deserves. Notably, he did something similar in 2002, taking out full-page ads to complement JLo's work ethic. Being able to blame circumstances in a breakup, whether it involves movie stars or ordinary people, leaves the door open to the possibility that those circumstances might change. The changing times have also made it much easier for both people in the relationship to be in a more stable place, removed from the initial pressures of early 2000s stardom and more settled in their careers. Now, J.Lo, instead of being one of many women mocked in the early 2000s press, is a serious, established, widely beloved star who continues to take on iconic roles in movies like Hustlers, for which many people felt she should have been nominated for an Oscar. This game is rigged, and it does not reward people who play by the rules. So she has more freedom to do what she wants and be fully appreciated. And while in the early 2000s, Ben Affleck was generally the butt of the joke, he's likewise now a much more serious and enduring star who's directed and starred in a Best Picture winner, perhaps the most concrete seal of approval from the Hollywood establishment in an award that was even announced by Michelle Obama. It doesn't matter uh, how you get knocked down in life, because that's gonna happen. All that matters is that you gotta get up. After their years in the metaphorical wilderness, both J.Lo and Ben Affleck have come back around to the public eye, but on their terms. In other words, Benifer was primed for a comeback. It's worth asking, why were people so primed to root for Ben Affleck, despite some of his more questionable behaviors that tabloids won't stop reporting to us? Somehow, this successful star became an underdog. The era of sad Ben Affleck started specifically during his initial estrangement from Garner. 
In a 2021 Howard Stern interview, Affleck controversially described feeling trapped in his marriage as a catalyst for his substance abuse problems, saying that staying in a relationship that wasn't working for the sake of his kids was part of why I started drinking. Though clickbaity headlines seized on these comments as blaming his ex-wife for his alcoholism, and Affleck had to go on Jimmy Kimmel and clarify his initial remarks. I would never want my kids to think I would ever say a bad word about their mom. because This really upset you. I mean, obviously. That hurts my feelings, yeah. man. The conversation still also had the effect of partly reframing him as a victim, someone deserving of sympathy. And many people can relate to the struggle of feeling unable to leave a relationship that's no longer working or bringing out their best selves. After so many pictures and narratives of his emotional suffering and attempts at recovery from his addiction, people had started to see Affleck as a pitiable figure. It was really hard for me to accept that that meant I was an alcoholic. This partly explains why many were so invested in his otherwise very unexpected relationship with Ana de Armas, a pairing that seemed to rehabilitate him and that ultimately primed us for the return of Benefer, especially after he was, once again, dumped. Finally, after all this buildup, Affleck got to be the hero of his own romantic comedy by going after the one that got away, sending love letters in the form of love emails to Lopez in early 2021. While she was still technically with Rodriguez, he reportedly wrote of how beautiful she looked while filming in the Dominican Republic, and she's said to have responded that he could own her heart with his words. Within a month of Lopez breaking off the engagement, the two were spotted together in LA and publicly got back together soon after. Since then, JLo and Ben Affleck have engaged in a classic celebrity activity, making a fantasy seem real to the public. In this case, that's the fantasy of having a do-over and getting to rewrite some of the low lights of our past. Returning to the one who got away is also getting to return to the person you were at that time, which for Affleck is the excited, hopeful, romantic guy who told Diane Sawyer, I consider myself to be the luckiest man alive for reasons which should be plainly self-evident after hearing Jen speak for a minute. In July of 2021, Affleck and Lopez even recreated their infamous ass grab moment from the Jenny from the Block video, and Affleck has seemingly worn the same watch he wore in that music video. Either enough time has passed that they can joke about it, or it simply doesn't matter anymore. This mirrors the resolution of romantic movies and TV shows where couples have to mature and go through a lot separately before they can finally arrive at the relationship they deserved the first time around. Whether that's Rachel getting off the plane for Ross on Friends, Ted going after Robin at the end of How I Met Your Mother, or even the end of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, when Joel and Clementine find each other even after having their memories erased. I'll get bored with you and feel trapped because that's what happens with me. Okay. Okay. Benefer's reconciliation is a rom-com fantasy, complete with its own set of supporting characters. Now, the antagonist is JLo's most recent ex, a literal popular jock figure, A-Rod. Rodriguez proposed to Lopez in 2019 with a very large ring, but they apparently broke up because he cheated. And in contrast to the cheating A-Rod, Affleck reportedly is at last feeling more comfortably matured into his life as a family man, getting along well with Lopez's children, shooting a movie with her mom, and developing a modern blended family. Lopez, Affleck, Garner, and their children all spent Halloween together. It's all the more inspirational when you consider how, in general, the celebrity romance is assumed to come with an intrinsic expiration date. In addition to the media pressure, there are the challenges of two people with busy schedules and lots of travel, plus the cliché of affairs resulting from attractive co-stars thrown together for long periods on set. Benefer isn't the only modern couple who's managed to get a second chance. Kristen Bell and Dax Shepard, Prince William and Kate Middleton, Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade, and Justin and Hailey Bieber, among others, all reportedly broke up before getting back together. He did break up with me very early on. Four days later, he <laughs> texts me and is like, uh, just joking, I can't do this. Um, I, 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 I would really like to be with you again. But few had the length of time apart that Benefer did, allowing them to both live full lives separately and mature as individuals before reuniting. In the ancient Greek epic Odyssey, 20 years is even the amount of time after which hero Odysseus returns to his true love Penelope after his long and winding journey home from the Trojan War. So the sheer length of their separation adds an epic, larger-than-life feel to the reunion. And in contrast to the cultural cliché that men will always be seeking younger female partners, it's also somewhat amazing to see a woman in her 50s being treated as the romantic heroine and timeless bombshell that famous men are fighting over in this real-life rom-com narrative. 
even if, admittedly, most 50-year-olds or people of any age look much like J-Lo. The way your woman looked today, I mean, my God, you came with the damn goddess. There you go. Perhaps the most interesting precursor to Benefer was iconic Hollywood couple Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, who married each other and divorced twice. I must say we enjoy fighting, having a fight, an out-and-out, outrageous, ridiculous fight is one of the greatest exercises in marital togetherness. As famously tempestuous as their relationship was, Burton once said about Taylor, our love is so furious that we burn each other out, the narrative of them continuing to return to each other meant that they were always merged in the public imagination, even if they didn't end up together in their later lives. Most One Who Got Away stories that do feature a happy reunion tend to end with that return. So they rarely give us a model for what comes after the second chance is obtained. A rare example is the Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, and Before Midnight series, three movies which, respectively, explore two central characters' initial spark during a chance meeting, their later reunion with this one who got away, and finally, their messy, realistic life as an actualized couple. As star Ethan Hawke put it to The Guardian, the first film is about what could be, the second is about what should have been, Before Midnight is about what it is. This is real life. It's not perfect, but it's real. No one gets to go back and change the past, but a wealthy celebrity who can look close to the way they did 20 years ago, if not better, can come closer than the rest of us. In contrast to the many, many years of photos where he's looking dour, Ben Affleck post his reunion with Lopez appears to be having a great time, both off and on camera. Now, J-Lo is the one who got away for Alex Rodriguez, who seems to have absorbed some of Affleck's sad boy energy, up to and including posting a video looking through his photos of J-Lo while listening to Coldplay. And so the cycle repeats. Affleck has said, I'm very lucky in my life that I've benefited from second chances through his beautiful relationship with Lopez. So it's a classic, near-mythical celebrity story that might inspire us all. If Benefer can eventually make it work, maybe one day our ones that got away will come back to us too. You're going through all of these things and you think, oh God, I just messed that up. And then all of a sudden one day it all kind of makes sense. Yeah. This is The Take on your favorite movie shows and culture. Subscribe so you can watch all of our videos.